come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. I have questions about the first time. <laughs> <laughs> We're a movie talk show and review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, hey, you can help us out with that. All you got to do is go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. Hey, this week actually is the beginning of uh, our listener request month. We do this every uh, January for four weeks. We're going to watch the tis the season. Y'all. I can't wait. This is going to be exciting. I'm excited. Of course, we knocked one off the list tonight that you guys request all the time. But uh, so head on over to our uh, Christmas came early. Yeah. Did it? <laughs> don't say it. We don't know that for sure yet, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, go to uh, wherever you found us. Uh, actually, check out our social media. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, you'll find the graphic uh, for the listener choice you month. You can submit, submit your some, suggestions. Yeah. And, and limit. No, I think, well, I mean, it'd be helpful if you just do like... Like three. Yeah, okay. Just yeah. do three, three, folks. I think we, we I think we limited them last year. Okay. Because mm-hmm. some people just go kind of bananas. That's right. We can't do like you 20. Get, no, yeah. you get three. You get so three. So think about it hard. Yeah. <laughs> you get an extra slot this year because I took one off the list. So, yeah. so there you go. That's, That's not going to fill your if thing. If we get more than three, we're just looking at the top three that you su- that you suggest. Yes. Um, also, and- uh, please consider availability. Mm. Uh, make sure that we can watch it somewhere, like a good copy of it, because we don't want some obscure thing that only you have on some. Like, yeah, if we have to order a copy of it, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, if at least provide a good YouTube link yeah. if you yeah. have to. Yeah. If you absolutely have to. It has to be yeah. good. Yeah, not, not shocking dark. Not shocking yeah. dark. Yeah. Come on. But we'll do that for two weeks, and then uh, we'll put them all up for a vote, and you guys can choose uh, which four that we're going to watch, and the one, the ones with the top votes, uh, will be the ones that we watch. In January, so I feel like, uh, I feel we're like looking they forward were pretty, to it. They were pretty kind last year, I think. They were. Yeah, we had yeah. a, It was good they last a, year. Yeah, it was, yeah. They've been getting better, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We Jaws did. the Revenge is better. Like, that was one of our... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good year. How <laughs> quickly you forget detention. Oh, was that the same year? That was the year before. Yeah. 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 Well, we should probably tell you who these people are who are talking oh. to you. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. Sorry. What? <laughs> what? Uh, what gives you the right? Gives you the right. Society gives me the right, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> so you blame them and not me. No, nope, blame you. What year? <laughs> Uh, 1989, 1992. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was 1998. Are we off? 98? 98? 98? No. Oh, no. Sorry, no. 88. 88. Yeah. Wasn't it 88? You said 89. Was it? I think it's uh, technically 89, 92. It okay. was finished in 89, and it came out I think it, here in London. I think it came out here in 89, and in London, 92, or it swapped. One of those. Mm, but okay. Interesting. Took a detour who's in our, distribution. Who's our director of this piece? Of- Brian Yuzna. <laughs> Do we know Brian Yuzna? You would. From what? Uh, from many things. Like? Uh, from the Freak Show, Return of the Living Dead 3, we've mm-hmm. done. Okay. Um, he is, I mean, he's directed Bride of Reanimator, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. Mm-hmm. He's a writing partner with um, Stuart, Stuart Gordon. Gordon. Yes. he's. He, uh, Brian Yuzna started out producing movies, and he produced a lot of Stuart Gordon movies. Um, that makes sense. Dolls from Beyond and Reanimator. Reanimator. Yes. Yeah. You're leaving out another body horror movie of the Ooh. 80s. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I was going to get there because he's also a writer. And he wrote hey, Stuart Beyond, Gordon Honey, wrote the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I know. You saved two people in society wrote Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> I, no, can, we just, can we just kind of like just, meditate on that for yeah. a minute? Just look at them both right there. I just need I you to picture the they're, yeah. society. There's a Venn diagram of 80s body horror that overlap with yeah. Honey, yeah. I Shrunk the Kids and society. I need to just think about that. Society. I don't know what parts mm-hmm. overlap. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. Really let that Because that was in. like something that they wrote and what I believe we're going to direct, right? And then mm. yes. it got sold and became like a different Because thing. when you watch right. this movie, you think, you know what? They should write a kid's movie. Definitely mm-hmm. a kid's movie. Yeah. I don't think it started out as a kid's movie. I think it, it mutated. Isn't that Joe Johnson? A lot of things with them mutated. Direct, I was like, yeah. mutation? What? Yeah. <laughs> That's a Disney property, that? right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, so Yuzna, I mean, he obviously, so he started as a writer, graduated to directing. 
Uh, yeah, he was a, he was a producer for Stuart and Gordon. Um, he they made Reanimator, um, and after that, Yuzna, um thought he had enough leverage to get himself into a directing role. So he, um, I think he made a deal where he's like, I'll do one picture and um, Bride of Reanimator, but I want to do my picture first before we get to Bride of Reanimator because Reanimator was such a big hit and he knew he could use that for leverage and Society was the movie he wanted to make before Bride Anytime of Reanimator. Anytime someone says picture, I just like... In my head, it's like old time. It's like, I'm going to do two pictures, but my, my picture is going to be the first picture, okay? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, he did. He is like, he took over the Reanimator franchise because uh, he did Beyond Reanimator, yep. right? And there was a talk about House of Reanimator that I don't nope. think ever materialized. I don't think so. But then, if I'm right, he eventually like left the country, went to Spain, founded a company called Fantastic Factory, then became like yes. a producer of kind of mid-level fantasy horror movies over there, including, I think, Faust, the adaption yep. of the comic book uh, was one of them. Uh, Dagon. Yep. The Stuart, uh, Stuart Gordon. Gordon movie, yep. Yeah. So they were, he was producing a bunch of stuff over there. Is he still active, do you know, or is he retired or... <sighs> Just living out. No, he's that still going. Sweet, he's still. Uh, honey, I shrunk the kids. Um, I don't know. <laughs> he's still. Um, I think there was some stuff recently. He's still going. He's still, uh, if nothing else, producing in Hollywood. He's still around. Okay. So he's still going. All right. So I'm curious uh, in your research of this movie, Sean. How do we? How? Who pitched Society? Like, what was the? Do we know what the germ of the idea was here? Uh, well, like the. First of all, it was written by uh, two guys, Woody Keith, who goes by a different name now, and Rick Fry. I don't know the origin Why of- did he change his name? Yeah, was this movie <laughs> <the original? laughs> well, I wonder. In I have to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it might be. Um, but, uh, I mean, they wrote it, but I don't know at what point that script got to Brian Yuzna. Because his whole thing with this movie was he wanted it, like the, like the makeup credit says, he wanted it to be uh, a surrealistic- thing um and so his ideas were more so he thought up weird shit and they incorporated that into the script because his ideas were for like the last half hour of the movie oh that's okay. that's where his motivation was like those are the things he wanted to do and he decided we'll build a script around that build a script around that i use quotes <laughs> on that one so he hired the two guys to like do that or they had already submitted i, a, I think a, they submitted the script okay. and then it kept evolving as they kept shooting because they would come up with different ideas during the shooting and incorporate them into the movie because it seems like well, i mean when you watch it it seems like this is a showcase piece for the makeup effects and that's uh that brings right. us to who that brings us to screaming mad george yeah so yeah, which is a great Name. <laughs> it is a great name. It is a great he decided name. on that name. He gave himself that name. Yeah, because he's from. Okay, uh, well now it's not cool. You can't yeah. give yourself a nickname. No, I mean, especially until one I, like that. But until yeah. I told you that, that's pretty badass, right? Um, I mean, until you told me that. Yeah, but like now that know. takes all the punch out this of it. This is a T-bone situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, work. screaming mad. Yeah. I did not mean to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's Japanese, right? Or he, he was born in Japan, and yes. uh, I believe that. He when he he either there angelicized his name George just to stand out. Yes. And then screaming mad George. To stand out more. Yeah. But that was like he like screaming Jay Hawkins yes, or something. That was, that was his inspiration kind of a, for it. Yeah. Yes. And he became like a makeup effects guy throughout the 1980s that was mainly responsible for like some of the weirder special effects. Right. But he did like the original Predator suit or something like that. Yeah. There's that. Oh, I took a picture of all that shit. Hold on. Yeah, because he also did uh, the Giver, but wasn't the Giver a Brian Yuzna production? Yes, it's all very. Um, what should I call it? What's the good word for society? Um, uh, um, incest. It's a very incestuous relationship he's got with like him, Stuart Gordon, and all that. Um, yeah, Scream incest is a pretty popular theme for society. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of is. Uh, Scream Mad did effects on Big Trouble in Little China, Predator, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Four. Three and four. Three and four. Yep. Okay. Uh, hide and go shriek. Yeah. Uh, Society, Curse to the Bite, Bride of Reanimator, Tokyo the Last War, Silent Night, Deadly Night, four and five. Freaked. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned for that. Right. There's five uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night movies? Holy there shit. Are, <laughs> there are five. There might wow. be six. I think there's five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and his only directorial effort, The Giver, which we have. Oh, also. he directed The Giver. He directed that's, The Giver. That's right. Yeah. Because we did I both of those. So. We did both of those. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 we were on that episode convinced that one of the 
Aliens yes. was the original in the, Predator yes, suit. Yes, in the first, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. Giver, yeah. there is a, uh, an altered version of the original Predator okay, suit yeah, as yeah, yeah. one of the aliens. All right. yeah. You'll have to go back and listen. Yes. Oh my God, it's all mad. coming back to me. <laughs> right? It's all <laughs> one big... It's like they're all connected to a big... By the mouth... Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> Stop it. You shut your mouth. I didn't do it. I mean, I kind of did. did. But you did. They did it. I'm just bringing it to you. Yeah, well, society is definitely a weird one. Uh, obviously, it has a, a huge cult following, I would think. Uh, I, I'm Apparently. justified in saying that, right? Oh, yeah. It seems all of our listeners have seen it and have been requesting that we watch it. Vestron put it out. It's become a punchline movie. Like, that, like you use society as like a benchmark for gross, right? Yeah. So you're like, oh, this is more mm. disturbing than that, than the shunting in society. It's like, yeah. a, that's like a film community punchline it seems like yeah. on the internet it's like how bad is it is it society bad yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i never would have got these jokes this yeah. is my first time watching it tonight yeah. <laughs> i'm the only one apparently yeah I you picked it stories. and you didn't even know about the shunting no nothing what did you, I, okay, <laughs> what did you think it was about out. what did you I, think this movie was about it was gonna be because based on the uh poster art that i've seen forever and you've seen it too it's a good poster a high society gal taking your face off as it stretches like uh like cheese pizza mm-hmm. cheese between that and her it's a good a- poster. It's accurate but misleading. Yes, if that makes sense. It is. <laughs> well, it's only it's what, like a tease. The, it's the, the tip of the face iceberg. Behind, the true face behind, like you know, Sunny. like mm-hmm. upper class elitist yes. society, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, because that's kind of what the movie, I guess, is going after in some ways, right? It's a definitely going after critique that. on the rich, but. So it's set in Beverly Hills, because if you're going to do a movie about the rich, you're going to set it in Beverly Hills, California. Mm. And who's our who's our central character here? Uh, Billy Warlock, playing Billy. Son of stuntman Dick Warlock. Really? He is. He is. Okay, I should wow. have put that together. You can see it. In the- it all goes back to Halloween, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Billy... Bi- oh, speaking... There's another thing about Halloween. Uh, speaking <laughs> of... Um, uh, oh, yeah, Billy Warlock. Uh, pre, Pre-Baywatch fame? Pre-Baywatch fame. That's a great name, Billy Warlock. Billy I'm Warlock, jealous. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like an '80s rocker. I know. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Should have had a rock band. Yeah. There, there was a rock Billy band Idol. named uh, Warlock. Warlock. Well, yeah. of course there was. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Billy Warlock of Baywatch fame uh, plays a um, upper crust young man who feels out of sorts. Out of sorts. Would you call him paranoid? He wouldn't. This is a paranoia movie. <laughs> this is. is definitely a paranoia yeah. movie. Yeah. The whole movie is like there's something going on that you don't know about as the central character, and you're working the whole movie to try and figure out what it is. And of mm-hmm. course, you're not going to like what that is. But I was like, it's weird. I've seen this movie and this is the third time, and I'm watching it. And I'm like, this movie does kind of play the way I assume like a schizophrenic sees the world, you know, it's right. like, it's gotta be that kind of, uh, you right. know, if nothing you makes any kind of sense. If, uh, people are always, there's something going on that, uh, that, you know, feels like you're getting fragments of stuff. Just yeah. weird stuff. If you guys weren't here, like I wouldn't believe that what I saw was what I saw. Like as far so as you like, are Billy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Just like guys, you saying uh, this? in this movie, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. In, in the movie, the way it's put together and everything. I'm just like, am I, I'm not crazy, am I? Maybe that's the whole point of the movie. Right, I, I thought yeah. you were going to say, I would have shut it off after 15 minutes. Is what I thought you were going to say. Like, if we were watching it together, I probably would have turned no, it off. I feel like you're giving it a lot of credit to think that was intentional. <laughs> no, I think you're giving it a lot of credit. Wait, which part? <laughs> the, the disorientation was intentional. No, it's the fact that... Oh, from the... Yeah. No, no, no. Not from the filmmaking standpoint. No. Okay. No, there's no, straight no, no, up no. bad editing. Yeah, in but this movie. I do think that I, I agree that there's bad editing, but I also think they were trying to be, you know, because they are, you know, he has a therapist and he's going because he's seeing like things that it turns out aren't there later. So they are kind of all horror movies do this to some point, you know, degree or another. The right. idea of the unreliable narrator. Like, right. You know, but are the they, part is what they see is it really horror or is are they crazy? Sure, I get that, but the part that's disorienting is the writing. It's well, yeah. not yeah. it's not killing time the movie. Yeah. 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 Well we're gonna get to that. Okay, so <laughs> tell us what this movie's about. What what's going on with young Billy? Billy is like I said, we're introduced to him as he's seeing a therapist and Billy is afraid. Billy is afraid of his mom, his dad, his sister. Billy's afraid of society. He doesn't know why. And his therapist. <laughs> and his therapist. Mm-hmm. He doesn't trust anybody. He's mm-hmm. had, uh, he's had got this odd feeling that he doesn't belong because he's uh, the son of um, very rich parents and um, affluent. You know, he lives in an affluent. I mean, it's Beverly Hills, so he's part of the upper crust, but not really. Um, and so, you know, he's having a hard time with life. little rich boy problems. 
Yeah. I have everything I could ever want and live a privileged life, but I don't yeah. fit in. <laughs> yeah. He really is cool. sad that yeah, it's he like, does not fit in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose that, yeah, because uh, he feels out of step with his own family. He feels yeah. out of step. But there it's is. It's called like, being a teenager. Yeah. Exactly. It happens. But I, think, yep. I yeah. think that's what this movie's tapping into. Like the core audience is going to be like somebody who sees, you know, things from mm-hmm. that perspective. I mean, most of the. I, I came uh, aware of this movie when I was, you know, in that age group. So um, the. The after the the initial session with his therapist, he does like start to because he's like uh, I, he's gonna be like the um, the class president. I mean, like things are going well for him based yeah, on his on situation in he's society. On the debate club, debate like, club, he's, yeah, he's, gonna be president. Yeah, yeah things he's are going trying. right. Which, he's the big man on campus. Which now. like mm-hmm. someone just needs to tell this kid none of these things matter as soon as you graduate. So stop stressing so much <laughs> over it. Like Legit. no one gives a fuck that you were head of the debate team That's when you society, graduate. Michaela. Like <laughs> yeah. the point of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. These things That's do right matter there. if he's going to get into an Ivy League school. And that That's little right. compact it, world to these people that matter. Yeah, he's teaching y- him he's life Yale bound. Lessons. <laughs> yes, but he gets uh, so early on. I guess like the 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 thing that this, there's an event that happens um, where his sister is about his sister is about to have like her coming out party, which mm-hmm. I think is like their sweet sixteen, like the like debutante ball. It's a cotillion. It's a cotillion. It's a cotillion. Yeah. Cotillion. Cotillion. That's ball, it. Yeah. 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 I was thinking, it's saying I'm, you're sexually available to adult men now. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. That is almost literally what they're saying yep yep oh that yeah that is yeah. literally what that's literally yeah. What yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but that's what it is in real life too. it's well, a I real thing in yeah. real life you're able to date is the idea and, right which yes. is still a gross concept yeah. like why do you need to have a party to be like my daughter's sexually mature now like that's unnecessary yeah, but where it comes from it's like a tradition that can, yeah it it's so gross it doesn't matter in today's society <laughs> yeah. you know but, but it does people still, have traditions but it does where still they matter kill people. To, it does still matter it is very much upper class society a high society thing yeah Mm-hmm. Especially in the South, too. Can you imagine four seasons of The O.C. and having it end like this movie does? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It wouldn't be the worst decision they made on that show, I mean, still. That's true. <laughs> I was well, going to say. Yeah. <laughs> they made worse choices. Yeah. Yeah. She has a uh, unexpected visitor in her bedroom who turns out to be her ex-boyfriend, Blanchard. Blanchard. Mm. And they have a hard Blanchard. time believing this guy's her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Because he doesn't seem to be in the same Ivy League circle. No, he seems like think, a freshman, too. Well, do you think she changed at some point? Like, she was, they were going out and it was like a real thing, but then they got a hold of her and now they won't see each other. Well, it and, ca- and just her relationship with her brother and everything, it kind of seems like her coming out party is where she became a woman, I guess. And she's different now. Uh, you know what I mean? Because mm. even the relationship beforehand, they seemed very close and I don't know. Yeah, huh. a lot is unclear about this. Movie, yeah. so. Yes, it is. There's a lot unclear about that. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, which we're going to find out. But um, so anyway, Blanchard uh, sneaks into a room and then is thrown out by Billy. And he's like, I really have to tell you something. You know, it's like it's not that I'm jealous or, you know, that I've been kicked to the curb. It's I found something out. And I have to tell you about it. Mm-hmm. So he has a recording because he's like tapped her earring or something Mm -hmm. yeah this guy's a genius yeah so what's on this recording an orgy gone wrong (laughs) how's it gone shunting colin a shunting (laughs) i think is it a shunting it's sh- well, later. Later, there's something called the shunt, but mm-hmm. uh, at this point, we don't know what that is. Right. Mm-hmm. So it just sounds like um, a lot of incestuous activity with her family, her yeah. mother and father, which mm-hmm. is and his everyone mother. at the cotillion, right, and everyone else there basically, and the judge, the judge, the yeah. very prominent and figure, the tycoon, yeah. Yeah, and Billy hears this and is just, like, disgusted by it. It's like, what's going on with my family? I already felt like I was not a part of them. I don't look like them, even, he says. And now I've heard this horrible thing that sounds like they're all fucking each other. Here's the the thing, though. (laughs) Why does he care? If, like, if you're family that you feel detached from and don't even really feel like you fit in you find out they're freaks having this incest cotillion orgy like he he's like acting like he's getting the worst piece of news he could ever get when he listens to this tape he's having like a mental breakdown right yeah. you'd be like well, wow these people are his... fucking freaks i'm moving out like well, end of story that's, 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 related i mean they're, so but they're but, not 
but he doesn't, he doesn't know, know that. But he's all he thought that, that for 18 years of his, or yeah. 17. He turns 18 yeah. soon. soon. I'm, just yeah. saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you already feel like you don't fit in and you find out these people are fucking freaks that you want nothing to do with, then you're like, my gut instinct was right. Fuck these people, you know? Right. I, I think mean, there'd still be a little... Uh, considering it's his family, like, it'd be really hard to deal with. This is like... Get um, that part. This is like the, in Truman Show, the people coming in to try and tell him, no, it's all fake, Truman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People coming in is like, society will... Shut you. Yeah, he is told that he's going to make a good addition to society and like mm. all this other stuff. Uh, so having this recording, right, this is the thing that kind of sets him off and it sets our expectation off that like eventually we're going to get to the, like there's you know, there's something that's going to happen in this movie, right? That's been set up by the promise of this m- thing, because yes. I think they're saying we know that the 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 coming out party is going to happen in the future and they've heard this or he's now heard that this uh, strange event has taken place mm-hmm. and so we're going to get to this party and something crazy is going to happen okay so now we're on a this early on we're on a quest to get to that point yeah is and it so, too early that he finds yes. this out or no it's the timing is off somewhere it's either too early or they don't have one enough of them movie to, there one to them, actually get you like, right. through like a... The ending needs to move up or this needs to move back. Yeah, because the movie's going to be him trying to investigate or kind of like peel back the layers, I guess, of like and try to get to the bottom of what the mystery is of what is going to happen. <laughs> There's a lot in what you just said. Yeah. Peel back the layers, yeah, trying to get to the yeah, bottom. Yeah, they're gonna, he's going to dive the, into like He's going to push his way through. Yeah. <laughs> like the content that we're given, this could have been a short in an anthology. Yeah, it really could have. Ooh. It would have been better yeah. in, a, in an anthology. Yeah. I think yeah. like the pace would have been yep. much made, more palatable. It would have made more sense. Yeah, this would have been a good kicker. Like, yeah. I, once we get to the part with all the stuff with the car crash and like I saw his throat slit, I'm like, what does any of this matter Didn't to matter. the end of the movie? You are literally just killing time to yeah. keep this character from going to this party. There were a couple but scenes God. where he has a friend named Milo who mm-hmm. he kind of recruits into helping him out where the, the scenes, there's several scenes that end with Milo in the exact same position yes. of going like, what, but buddy, we got to go do this, whatever. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. Billy drives away from him. And then mm-hmm. like the next scene ends the exact same way. And we're like, exactly. why? Wait, yeah. You're not forwarding anything yeah. here, but okay. Why, why is the society working so hard to like make him feel more paranoid? Maybe why, makes, why does this, why is this part of the ritual? Maybe it makes him taste better. But that's never explained. It if that's never, the case. never explained. It we just feels like it was padding to get to, yeah. to a full runtime. We also don't know why he's selected and why Milo isn't. For yeah. instance, I mean, like mm-hmm. there's, they make it seem like it's very special that he's like the chosen. Uh, they make it sound like thing. they've been like raising him to be this yeah. sacrifice his whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. why? And why so. is that special? And why do we care? Yeah. Like, what's the difference between him and Blanchard? You know, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. None of it's for explained. A plot, you don't get it. But again, if you go like just from his perspective, it's that whole idea of, you know, everything I've been told in my life is a lie. You know, every, there's this massive conspiracy and it does all focus in on me. You know, uh, right. it's that sense of um, uh, dread, I suppose, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. The but whole they, like, they reality put, explodes. Right. The effort they put into like making him feel more paranoid, like his parents just could have raised him as like a normal kid, treated him like a normal kid, and he would have still been just as blindsided by this whole thing. Yeah. You know, like also they put so like, much extra effort into also, it. Also, like he he thinks that his family doesn't really like him and that they're not proud of him and that the sister's the favorite. If they're raising him up to like be this this chosen one wouldn't they like pretend to like him yeah they're blowing their I own cover here yeah, yeah. I don't think you know how when rich people are rich for so long they don't know how to be normal no yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll not, yeah i've never experienced that first hand. Never, okay yeah. i didn't say okay we haven't experienced it but you people celebrities yeah, and rich people are like, outside a version of their reality it's like how barbara streisand has a mall in her basement like, like that's that's like a that. that's like a they rich are just yeah we can't understand at that. a certain point well, those, and i think those, those parents different. don't know how to be normal and to if they even if they wanted to raise him like and just keep him clear from all this stuff until the timer's right to shunt him um i don't think they'd be able to do it i just think they're They've been in the situation too long. They've been doing this for too many years. But and Joseph, I just, just how they act. he would have been raised in that environment and would be used to normaler. 
Yeah, because yeah, I think right. like what you're talking about, like More you know, the the wealthy that seem alien to the rest yes. of us are specifically the wealthy that are live in the public under intense public scrutiny. That warps your brain, mm. in right? A way that, right, because like, you don't have normal. Right, it, you are in a bubble. Right, you know. Yes, uh, and Even I think just, that does happen with like a lot of the wealthy once right. there's you know uh, public attention to you, but. but yeah, we just never learn what the benefit is to like raising the sacrifice in your own house as your own child. Like, they, yeah, why is this the best way? Why yeah. is this? Why is he a special treat? Why right. is it important? And, like, yeah. what right. makes this him would right. have helped the movie? Mm-hmm. Yes, we knew this. Um, so, what is this? You've been mentioning this word, this strange alien word, shunt and mm. shunting, and it sounds like a medical uh, a device. What is? I mean, it technically is a <laughs> medical procedure. <laughs> I, I was going before. Uh, not in movie. the movie. You're well, saying, no, before but... I saw this movie, I was like, my dad had a shunt put in once, but then I decided, and I'm just <laughs> like, it's not like this. It's different. So, don't what is the it. shunting? I don't know. Is there's not a specific? It's is it the whole ceremony or is it the specific process? Like I'm using hand motions here, people. Right. Yeah. 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 He's mm-hmm. reaching inside something. A cavity. Yeah, put, yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely a cavity. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I don't know if that's the specific shunt. It is. It's a feeding. Let's put it that way. It is. Is oh. it? Or that's is it, it like a sexual ritual and a feeding? Well, so it's like it's, it's both. That's oh, where I'm unclear everything. as well. Yeah. Yes, because it's. I mean, they're in the red orgy room. Like it is yeah. a sexual. But like, what do they get out of this? Right. They don't get younger, which no. is, I mean, he got a beauty mark, but I would have thought, like, why? Yeah. Again, why? what, it, what yeah. is but the I, benefit to this? But I think, but that's the thing. I think there's, this is another thing with them being so rich that they just do this shit. No, they get something out of it. Obviously, but the, yes. The but, only thing that, that I was able to get out, and this is just based on what I saw in the movie, they do consume, they eat. So there is like a an eating, feeding, c- consuming, The uh, they absorb uh, the person who is the, you know, the sacrifice, yes. right? Like it, that person doesn't exist anymore. He's either been eaten or like parts of him appear on other people's body. They take, you know, what he has and distribute it amongst them all. They just kind of, you yes. know, uh, yeah, like leeches <laughs> or something. I don't know. They, he, they break him down and, 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 and reprocess What were the slugs it. all about? I, I think they're hors d'oeuvres. I, yeah, I thought that was some kind of delicacy or something that they were raising in the garden. Because uh, they had them on a tray being yeah, taken but I, around. But, but so what? Like, so, like they, <laughs> they hit it so heavy when they first it's, introduced the slugs, and then it's just, we're eating and then slugs, It's like escargot. It? It's uh, yeah, but, yeah, but, food. But, but then when <laughs> later on when we see what's inside of them, it's slugs and maggots. Yeah, is that yeah. because of that's what they ate in it? Uh, uh, I don't know. At one point, a character is pulled inside out. So, I mean, basically what we're talking about, the shunting is a big, uh, it's like a sexual orgy um, kind of covered, you know, all these bodies <laughs> intermingling. Bodies. It's an osmosis K-Y. orgy. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's like the slick. thing monster in an orgy. It's yes. just like random body parts connected in random places. It's really hard to describe. You, it it's, really is. Yeah, it yeah, seems there's, like there's physical that, skin connections between the people's mouths and the body. Kind yeah. of, a Blanchard. Um, kind of slitherish yeah yeah. It was, yeah i was thinking yeah. that like yeah. james gunn saw this movie yeah absolutely at the end of slither yeah. when they're when it's like the pile of people yes. like james gunn thing. loves this movie yeah, yeah. well he I loves a lot of stuff too. from the slither is an amalgamation right. of like oh, yeah. all these of this movies. and night of the creeps yeah, yeah. To those two movies yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, if you can imagine, right, there's a lot of prosthetic work. I mean, it's a fairly significant amount, basically making this giant living carpet of puppeteered uh, people parts all together. uh, You can't tell where one person starts and another person ends. It's just this mass. There's a goofy Like a true orgy. (laughs) A guy. (laughs) Gooey, stretchy mass. But everything's wet. Everything. Like everything's gooey. Trilogy. Yeah. Everything's gooey. And smelly. I imagine yeah. like it. Sean, like don't, it's don't, <laughs> just don't. Because um, one guy at some point, there's a famous image from this uh, movie where there's like a, a guy who's fake. He actually, you know, becomes a butthead. Not that's any guy. Joke. That's that's Bill's dad. Yeah. Bill's yeah. Dad. Which is this is the payoff to an insult earlier. He says, "Fuck you, butthead," to his dad, which we were like. Wow, you lead like, with wow. the F word and you finish with butthead. Like, yeah. you kind of lost the steam on that immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he does become a butthead. He literally becomes a butthead. It would have oh. been funnier if it was asshole. Yeah. Asshole yeah. would have yeah. made way more sense. Yeah. Yeah. But then he wouldn't be a butthead. I don't know. But yeah, he's a, he would be an asshole, <laughs> yeah. which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. <laughs> it's a. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a big centerpiece for the makeup effects crew, and it yes. goes on. 
forever. It, it goes on a like long time. Way longer than I thought it would. Yeah. yeah. Like I thought. But we were... it had to because it took a long time to get there. I yeah. suppose if it takes that long to get yeah. there. It took an want... hour and 20 minutes to Ugh. get here and then there was 20 minutes of it. Mm-hmm. It was a very long shunt. Mm-hmm. They shunted for a while. They oh, did. They had I wonder, stamina during. I wonder shunt. if they're normally that long. <laughs> do you? Do we get a sense of how long it's been between shuntings? I feel like. Like how often do they do this? Well, what? Because this this wasn't her coming out party. She had her coming out she party had it before. That That's was the recording. recording, right? Yes. So I think this is the second one recently, right? Yes. Right. This yeah. is yeah. Like, yeah. This so is how, how much time between the these two? Well, the one shunting I think was for her. Right, and I, right. And I don't know who was involved with that one. I I, but I, I got the impression that this was like some kind of continuation yes. of her coming. Like, well, this the, was a party for the judge. Yeah, but he was going to be there at her. No, he, like, he was at her party, and yeah. then this was a party for the judge. Right. So the judge has shunted twice. Because he's like have. the that, leader. That's what I'm saying. How their... much, like, like, it's not like this is like an annual ritual, clearly. Like, no, so, like, this, this how often wondering. does this happen? Yeah, this I was wondering if it was an annual thing. I think they got lucky that this many kids came of age at this time so that they could. Do they have to be of a certain age? Is that mentioned? This is never like, explained. No, no, no. What this are the boundaries us? for, right. and like, who was chosen for her shunting? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, Actually, there, there is on the tape that he hears. There is the you know we hear some victim screaming and he's, mm-hmm. he's being absorbed. Right. But who was it? We don't know. <laughs> like this would have been a good plot point. You know, like right. there's a student at the school or whatever who disappears. Right. We open where's, with them being where's, gone. Where's the police procedural side of this? Where it's like all these kids keep going missing. You know, like yeah. and then that's how everything yeah. comes together. Like I I had I had assumed that that was Blanchard. Right. Because yeah. he disappeared that day. Right. right. But then they bring him back. That would have made more sense. Yeah. But he was on the recording that Blanchard had. Oh, no, he didn't disappear that day. Oh, he got right, kicked right. out of her house that day. Never yeah. mind. Never mind. Right, right, right. Take that back. So, yeah, there's a missed opportunity there, I right. think. Um, so this, um, yeah, I mean, th- it's revealed that they're aliens, right? And, like, this mm-hmm. was just like, okay, well, they're are they? Aliens. No, he's no. calling them aliens. They've been right. here forever. So, like, reptilians, I guess? Right, yeah. like some sort of like but archaic paranormal being. Something? They trace their lineage back to Julius Caesar and Genghis Khan. Yeah. They said like they we can like not that they lived at the same time as them, but they actually like yeah. traced themselves somehow back to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know like what's going on there. It's not explained. Um, Billy's trying to when he first hears about all of this stuff. There's uh, you know he he I guess. Like he's having problems with his girlfriend, right? It was high. Right. I forgot Friday about her. Part seven. <laughs> yeah. Because what was the point of that storyline? Like, because she like, exits yeah. the movie and she never does. comes back. Oh, they. Are, what? Are, where is she? They're crying in the car. Is that it? That's, that's, that's it. it. That's it. And well, she, she literally drives him, out of the movie. Yeah, she wants him to go to Tad Ferguson's party or whatever it is, right? Tad, Tad the tycoon. Yeah, it's like he's uh, another upper cruster who um, is somehow Billy's not in that clique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many different types of rich kids go to the school that he's not rich enough to be in with the cool rich kids? Oh man, his house, their house is fucking huge. Well, yeah, like, but I, I, think I feel the like curse of school. I was like, that's that just always, high school. Yeah, there's that's just always high that, there's clicks. There's always yeah. a level of shit below someone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like a social thing. But even though he's like, it seems like very popular in especially the debate class, mm-hmm. and the school seems to like him over. The other kid from uh, Pumpkinhead, yeah, uh, who's the the Poindexter, who you know is yeah, also yeah. running in the debate team. The Poindexter, but Sweater one of the runners. popular kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah he he's hangs in out. the group. He hangs out. That's because he probably does everybody's homework. Well, Maybe. he's part of society. They, right, they, yes. they say like basically everything's rigged and he's going to win anyway. Right. But it seems like Billy has a certain uh, like a popular following. Mm. Um. So it's like you think he would have like a uh, a circle of friends or something like that, but he doesn't. He seems to be isolated. Uh, he turns this tape over to um, the psychiatrist. Yes. And then the psychiatrist plays it back to him. And it's just an innocuous conversation mm-hmm. between the parents and, and the yeah, daughter. Instead of, saying, Which is, instead of saying you get to fuck whoever you want, and then you get to fuck everybody. And now it's just time, oh, I get to dance with whoever I want. <laughs> yeah. 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 And this uh, is, it's like TV editing, TV censorship. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is what it's it really like. Is. It's kind <laughs> of funny, <laughs> honestly. And whatnot. Um, Wait, is that why his therapist kept feeding him? Because he was fattening him up? <laughs> but like, why? What does that have to do with Right, and he anything? was feeding him vegetables. And yeah. Stuff. 
I think he just ate an apple once. I think you're eating. <laughs> I think you're like, he was feeding him. Well, he had the Back vegetables. He had, a, he had an yeah, entire he had fruit bowl, and then he had like a whole bowl of vegetables. Like, he had therapists food don't have every food time. in their office. I go to the therapy. Yeah. They I don't wish. have food for you. It'd be more fun if they did. Seen. He got stopped on the way to feeding the rabbit. That's all. <laughs> Could you imagine if your therapist had like an icy machine? That'd be dope. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. they need to get on that. Robin, you know? if you're listening, get an icy yeah, machine. Yeah. <laughs> And then tell me, I like rotate the flavors, you know, right. like next week I can mix and match these See, two. I'm all know? about some blue raspberry. Yeah. Robin, me too. Yeah. Notes. <laughs> blue raspberry is well, this seems to be happening to him a lot as far as like you talk about the tape and how he plays it back and it's different. Yeah. He's biting into apples and seeing worms and shit, which are not there. He's hearing things. He's seeing things. People in he weird positions. He sees his sister in the shower yeah. uh, where she's apparently like uh, two sided. Yeah. He can see her back and her front at the same time yeah. through the right. shower door. Her but butt and her boobs. When he opens the door, same she's side. normal. Uh, he then finds uh, there's this uh, new girl in school or something, or it's a girl from Clarissa. She's like, yeah. yeah he she acts comes like, out of nowhere. He acts like he's never seen her. I was like, they go to the same school. And she was the one like spreading her legs earlier in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he runs into her at the beach. Yeah, and his best friend knows who she is. Why doesn't he know who she is? Yeah, he's just like gobsmacked uh, whenever she's around. She holds a certain. Uh, I just, I uh, have so many over. issues. I have so many fucking issues <laughs> with this character of Clarissa. Like, she is the weirdest fucking character. She makes no sense. She says the most batshit crazy thing. She's really hard to watch. It's really cringy. Like, and and <laughs> like, he still likes her. By the end of the movie, like he still like wants her. I'm like. Seriously? Just because she's hot? He or, she's fucking weird. See, there's like her whole arc, which she does actually have an arc, when but they, it's just like arbitrary. When they, when they escape, yeah. they take her with. She oh, falls yeah. in love with them. Okay, so she, it turns out Clarissa is one of the uh, the shunters. Sure. What sure. are we calling them? Part yeah. of society. So, society, yeah. She's part yeah. of society. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so she's trying to seduce him into society. That's her her whole thing, right? Right. And get her away from, or get him away from uh, the blonde girl and into society. And so then they go off to Tad Ferguson's party and they have sex, but he sees her like... Uh, Jumbled. Yeah. <laughs> but then all of a sudden she's not, and it's like, is he crazy or whatever? And then somehow... She falls in love with him and then wants to get away from society and actually go with him and, and pee in his tea. Yeah, okay, what she, was that she all says about? The most bizarre thing. What she were saying, like crazy. it sounds like she's an alien. <laughs> but yeah. the, right. The way she kept insisting that he drink his tea made me think there was like something in it that they yeah. wanted to like sedate him with or something. Because yeah. she kept being like, "Drink your tea, drink your tea," and he was, was that clearly a good not joke? interested. The uh, no. girlfriend's outside and like wonder what's going in on that or going on in that room. Cut to. She's serving him tea. What I mean, the it? editing there was kind of funny, yeah. but but, <laughs> but was that an intentional joke? I, I don't it. think. I don't know if it was. Like, <laughs> okay, if, if it I don't was, think we can talk about intent. Yeah, so much like, on this movie. Yeah, like if it know. was, I didn't read it. I don't know. It didn't work. I don't, it's it's weird because at this point in the movie, there is just a lot of randomness. Yeah, or I don't know what any intention stuff is in that movie. is adding to the surreality of this movie, whether they're doing that on purpose which again we talked about purpose before but they are putting it on screen for a reason like she is just saying random w jumbled words it's it's like your programming got mixed up it's weird but they yeah. are doing it on purpose to disorient us they have to be because even the uh, yeah it has to be right it has because to be. otherwise I mean, that's it's... the only cuz he is like under her spell i guess he's just so you know attracted to her she's just saying all this bizarre stuff and that's the thing. It's like Billy Warlock. I don't know if it's his character or if it's the way he's written or sorry, if it's him as an actor, he's like a non-entity in his own movie. He just wanders around kind of with his mouth hanging open all the time. He reminded me of the kid in Shocker. I thought they had similar vacant vibes. Mm -hmm. Shocker has gone out of my head. <laughs> yeah, you guys all looked about. at me like you didn't know what movie I was talking about. Because it's Peter Berg. I like, yeah. And, I, yeah. I, yeah. I remember that guy was a nothing I see. I yep. liked him more than I. I think I like this guy. This guy was like just like. Whoa, we need whoa, to come up with whoa. a term for these actors that like you've seen them before, but like when you think about them, it's just like vapor. Like you're just like I don't. I know that name. I know I've seen them in a movie, <laughs> but I cannot picture them for the fucking life of me. Yeah. Like for me, that's Scott Eastwood. I even though he's Clint Eastwood's son, I know what he looks like. I'm just like I know I've seen him in a movie. Couldn't tell you what it was. And um, Suicide the other Squad. one. Well, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, who wasn't in Suicide Squad? Oh, there was um, another one. I can't remember who it is. 
Move on. <laughs> Move on. I'll think of it. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, Billy Warlock, I watched enough of him in Baywatch where I think this is him. This okay. is him as an actor. Okay. This yeah. is He's it. a one trick pony. That's yeah, with no tricks. I'm with no tricks. <laughs> I mean, he's either he's got the paranoid, but he's also just playing kind of the the rough. I don't want to talk about. It. Yeah. Like yeah. that kid. He, Which he looks like in, like a like a photo negative C Thomas Howell. He's like the he's like the he dark is. version of C Thomas Howell yeah. in the looks department. Okay, so C <laughs> Thomas Howell, nothing. No matter what, <laughs> you I haven't seen at, the Outsiders. No, no, no. He's, I, I he know, is no, Pony Boy. I know C Thomas Howell. Yeah, but I like you say his Hitcher? name, and I can't yeah. see him. Yeah, it's a, it's like we need to come up with a term for this because there's a lot of actors that fall in Jai right. Courtney. I know I've seen Jai Courtney and yeah. stuff. Couldn't tell you Wasn't a fucking thing also about it. In Suicide Maybe Squad? Suicide Squad is like the, the <laughs> cast all these vapor actors. Found the key here. <laughs> you know who else is in it? C. Thomas Howell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah C. Thomas Howell is in it. But. Well, you there said there was a bunch of uh, like. Uh, weird nonsense or you know strange things I like what like what what's happening in this movie that you're just like what the <sighs> I mean well Clarissa's mother Okay. Right. So, okay. Clarissa's fucking mother. What is the okay. goddamn point of this? Is, this is a fucking John movie. Waters character. Yes. Yes. It yes. Is. yes. It is. She looks like Divine. She, she looks has like a hairdo yeah. like Divine. She yeah. seems like an extra in uh, Crybaby. Like she'd be yeah. one of those people living in Turkey Hill. You know, yeah, like for sure. So, yeah. I, but I don't. But I don't like understand what's going moron. on there. I don't she's, understand. And there's no resolution or explanation at all. She's just obsessed with hair. She eats I, it. She I eats think, it. I, I think I she got know. fried. I think they tried to do something to her. But and... don't we need some kind of yeah? We need to know why or an aside. If you're gonna or have this character, yeah, or... I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I thought of the other vapor actor. It was Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, I know I've seen that guy okay. in movies. Yeah, Rogue Couldn't one? tell you what he looks like. No, okay. Couldn't tell. I didn't know he was in Rogue One. Yeah. Right. Couldn't tell you most. He does play enough of like he's the bad guy. The in this movie. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Um. So yeah, her character is just like so. She's like this vacant kind of lumbering around. Uh, like she ends up. I, I don't. But they don't explain like right. what Clarissa's like because I was sitting there going like, okay, is she one of them or not? Because she seems to be trying to help. Uh, Milo and Billy, right? Mm -hmm. In a lot in there because they're like basically trying to uh, remove themselves from society. I mean, that's like the are they? Their... They keep going back there. Mm -hmm. They like, keep going back, and they keep being dragged back. At some point, like no, they keep scene. going back because it circles and circles. They go to the hospital and they go back, and then he goes to the girlfriend's house, and then he goes back. What like, if? What if? Big no. what if? What if mom has like overindulged in the shunting and this is the result? And it's also why the daughter's like so bitter. She's like, this is what happened to my mom and I want out. Don't and do homework like, for this movie. Say, Don't sorry. do homework. You're right. She, she did, I'm sorry. No, she did say, I'm sorry. But even right say, there, that's something. Like, yeah, the dog yeah. did say, I don't Give like the things she does. Give me something to grab on. Isn't yeah. that what she said? Yeah. Maybe the daughter knows about all this stuff, but she's just But like, why is her mom like a slow mute? Like, Again, why is she, she have some we sort need, of we, yeah, we need mental that backstory issue yeah. in order to make sense yeah. of that character? I have Otherwise, not given that a backstory. Yeah. Only me, <laughs> not the fucking writer. Yeah. Right. And it's it's just it's so out of tone with the rest of this movie. It like is. I said, it feels very John Waters. And if it this movie really wants does. to be a John Waters movie, I'd probably be more on board with it. I did for like sure. You the know? hair thing where she's just like, I like hair. I just gonna keep I liked, the kids' hair. I did like Milo's interaction with her. He's yeah. just yeah. like, "Don't touch my hair." Yeah. yeah, but again, this is like a weird comic oh, interlude. It makes no sense. Oh, yeah. It makes, no, it makes sense. no sense in the middle of this movie. Yeah. What I guess, like, and that's where you know tone is kind of like all over the map. And I, I assume that this is why this movie stands out to people. You can come with me, just don't touch my hair. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, "Oh, that's funny." You know, this makes why it is you know, funny? unique it's and quirky. unusual. I, I mean, there's a lot of jokes flying during the shunting when it finally shows up too. But Ugh, uh, I just. There's a lot of stuff flying during the shot. Yeah. There is, and I can't, I can't. But as far as plot goes, like, I don't get, like, okay, it, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to have this love story with uh, uh, with him and Clarissa, right? It's, uh, it's a lust story a that lust turns story. into a love story. Why she would choose to go with him, I don't understand that, you know? She was looking for an escape from this life for a long time, Colin, and he finally came around. Again, that would be cool if we if we got any of yeah. that, or any kind they of gave us that. Any yeah. kind of <laughs> I know, I know. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anything. The parents, at some point, um, they take uh, they like he breaks he eventually is like I'm gonna go to this party because that's what they want me to do or whatever and he goes in there and they all of a sudden that's exactly what they said he goes to this party or whatever and yeah, yeah. And that's people come out of the woodwork and grab him and inject him full of drugs and take him off to the hospital 
Right. And then he gets out of the hospital and he, he goes, goes back to the he party. He goes to Clarissa's house yes. for some reason. To smack her around. He sees a friend of his, or no, the, the other, his... Uh, Milo. De- no, the uh, the debate guy oh. is like dead in yeah. a ravine. Martin. This is the part where Martin. I was like, wow, we are really padding for time. Yeah. Yep. Martin, he sees like his throat slit. It, it's like, it feels like a, like a David Lynch scene almost. Like it's like... Oh, uh, this car crash on like Mulholland Drive right, where the car yeah. flips over and this guy's dead and bleeding on the side of the road. Why does it matter? Don't know. It doesn't. It's just to show that they're gaslighting him, I guess. I know. Like, it, it's a very long setup. Very long. So long. Right? He's told to meet Martin. He goes to, you know, at the psychiatrist's office, right? I think that's where he says, I'll meet you at this place. He right. goes there. Oh, the, it's at the funeral, I think. The car, oh, that's right. At the yeah. funeral. The car is overturned. Dude's throat is slit. He goes and gets the cops, bring them back. It's not the same car. We've already done this before. Like yeah. every time that he brings authority or some second person to see something, it's different. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are we doing doing this again? Right. 40 minutes in, I'm like, all right, I got I, this is what I wanted to yell at the movie the entire time I'm watching it. I got it. Yeah. Let's go. He got to the yeah. house and Let's the party. Get there. Then they took him out to the hospital yeah. where nothing happens. He sees another phantom thing that didn't exist. And then he goes matter. back to the party, and it's like, we could have been here 10 minutes exactly. ago. Yeah. It's always frustrating when you're like five steps ahead of the movie, and you're waiting for it to catch up to you, you know? Yeah. That's never a good viewer experience, ever. Yeah. And it's never good in, when it feels this blatant. Because well, we've watched plenty of movies where it feels like, all right, they're giving us a little bit of a runaround, but there's some sort of purpose to it. This is it's nothing. None. Yeah. Nothing. We're just running around doing the same thing over and over again for a long time. Mm-hmm. For the for the same payoff, no matter what, no matter yeah, right. what they do, the payoff is still the same at the end. Yeah. Like, so why are we wasting time on this? Yeah, pa- they're just they I th- they want to add to the paranoia. They wanted it to be a full length feature. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it seems like that's it. I and really again, agree with your anthology theory. Thank if this you. was like twenty minutes long. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, yeah, we could have done a pretty decent set because you can the setup with like rich society and not feeling a part of it and feeling like they're other i think that's a pretty simple story you can communicate that in five minutes yeah you can communicate you know? that yeah. real quick yeah. so you give it a little longer give it a little setup for it and then you end with the shunting and everything and actually show us the cotillion i i was surprised we didn't right. see that yeah like show us the cotillion and it ends in the shunting that's the movie then we're done we're out on or this even, anthology you know you go to the cotillion like this is the thing and something weird happens like that would lead you to believe something odd is going on with these people and then we get to we yeah. still have the party they, they are, it's the after they party that, yeah. yeah they did that with the recording i think it would have been probably well i don't know if you if you saw it it would give away i guess what you're you know what the whole movie's leading to which is the big well, I don't think right see but we're talking it, about in like, like a 20 minute oh, anthology 20 minute version. version yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah well the movie pads it out also with there's a rivalry of course you know because it's a high school yeah, movie. yeah why is so he's a rivalry with uh tad ferguson right which has yeah. got to be resolved during the shunt of course. Where the shunting champion, Ted Ferguson. Which, I'm that, like, I mean, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I was like, oh, they're, I was like oh, they're fighting now? Fight? When did this happen? The shunting can go two ways, apparently. Like, if yeah. you're the shunt victim, you can shunt somebody else, apparently. I guess. I don't uh. I think the shunters are very malleable being they even say that they say oh right. like don't they say something like oh he's almost malleable like i'm pretty sure oh, they, they say do. that they said, like, they said yeah, something about like the judge comes loose in. enough yeah, yeah they do yeah. they're so very I think, stretchy they soften them up i think all they're all very some version of that so mm-hmm. it's easy to get our end that we get in this mm-hmm. again all us <laughs> yes. yep. not the movie yep <laughs> We are filling in a lot of blanks here, folks. Yeah. Mm. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like when you're in college and you write in a paper and you're like a page short of the page required yep. page length and you're just making those decimal points bigger and stuff to like, you know, kind of fill in all the gaps to fill out the page length. Uh, I feel like that's what we're say, doing for this movie. We're filling more spaces than they did in the yeah. front. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just did them. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think. There yeah. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. I was even trying to like Stop it, it. <laughs> to go at it from like the psychological aspect of like the whole thing is like, OK, we got a guy. He has sexual feelings for his sister. <laughs> Are you and, Freud now? I'm trying to do Freud. That's, okay, that's, that's pretty good. good. And that's one of your mother, better ones. And okay, I didn't see two more. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and somehow this all plays out by, you know, this, you know, he. It would have been better <laughs> if the therapist had had that accent. Yeah. Like, and a, and a Anything would have been. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I don't think it plays out. I mean, the whole thing, uh, by the end of it, he's 
he wins like he's able to beat Ferguson he by pulling Ferguson. him inside out. That he is does, a, admittedly is a cool. cool. It is cool. Yeah. It is yeah. cool. Yeah. It is cool. Up, his eyeballs are coming out. The thumb, thumb through, through the, the mouth, mouth yeah. which is because that's how you want to grab someone. Yeah. If you're going up through their ass to their face, that's how you want to grab yeah. someone. <laughs> it is pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. But he couldn't put him back, himself back together after that. I don't I know. Guess I guess w- I would have wanted someone to like pick him up and p- yeah. like pull him inside out and be like, oh, that's going to take some time to fix it. He's just a rubber Just kind of like thing. do one of these. Like, yeah. yeah shake that, shake it like a rug. I want. Like, yeah. I like I want shake these sprinkles people. out of a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want these people to have experienced this enough where shit like this happens and they have a sense of humor about it, which See, they kind of do because that- they've been doing this a lot. But I want more. If we're going to get that on screen for 20 minutes, yeah. do it. Make some more jokes about it. Come on. Something that would have been like the dead alive version. I mean, yeah, th- exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah, or the I, James Gunn version would have done something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. You know? Yeah, I made us wait too long. Yeah, it does feel like there's just there's there's a concept here. There, mm-hmm. oh, there is, and the concept is like okay, this is a relatively unique thing. Like I don't know that you you haven't seen this movie before. Like you know the fact that Slither you know, is an echo of it later yeah. on. But the, no, the concept of this is like, it's ripe for it. Like this is, it's a good idea. Society yeah. and they are the other and all of this. It's a great idea. It's the execution in most areas, I'll say, is the problem. But it, no, it's everything it, else. The like, the thesis is good, but it's so shallow. Like, like real. if you really want to push this narrative of like upper class people are scum of the earth that feed off of people they see beneath them, Hit that harder. Like, mm-hmm. don't make it some kid that was part of a rich family. Make it that they're, like, kidnapping homeless people off the streets or adopting it. Like, make it so they're really preying on people below them, you know? Mm-hmm. Because that does not come across in this movie very yeah. clearly. So we know, the we, island. We didn't, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we didn't get a story of why they adopted, or, like, them adopting this kid at all. No backstory. We got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't even find out like his, right. uh, you know, because again, that would have added something. Right? Did they do it? Yeah. What they do with his parent? You know, like, right. yeah. yeah. Is this the normal process? Do they all just like adopt kids so there is no background on them? So when they, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Know. There's, no, then, there's no answer. Because yeah. at the shunt, uh, Blanchard uh-huh. is the first victim. Yes. Which is a you know a matter of convenience. It's so we can hold you captive, Billy, while we show you the special effects that would have happened to you. <laughs> right. We get to show you the test version before it happens to you. And that gives you a chance to get out of it, yeah. you know, right. and become the hero of the story. And we don't know anything about Blanchard's like backstory. No, it's, no. you know, it, it doesn't seem to matter who the victim is, which is why it's annoying that they act like Billy's so important. Yeah. I kind of like the idea that it doesn't matter who the victim is because they're rich and they'll get away with it. Like there's, there's, there's potential follow here. through. There's, we need follow through on these ideas of like really good ideas that I don't know. They just didn't feel like chasing them. I don't know. It's odd. Mm-hmm. Odd movie. Or that's as far as they were able to go. Maybe. I mean, it I mean, was just, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. know. They had, they had an hour and 40 minutes to figure this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but they were so, but that's what it feels like. They were so uh, focused on the special effects. Yeah. You know, that took precedent. Yeah. That I mean, took that precedent. Was, just getting to that scene was their and objective. And that was the focus. I think um, you talk to anybody from this film and they'll say that. Just like, this is what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. That end was the goal for them. Everything else leading up to it was just mm-hmm. everything else leading up and to it. And it is what everybody remembers from the movie. Yeah, I mean, now that absolutely. you've seen it, Sean, this is imprinted on your brain. <laughs> that, you know, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will not remember uh, the sex doll in the Jeep or... I have forgotten most of the No, movie. you're right. I will this remember is the my end third this time watching this movie, <laughs> and every time I watch it, the whole first, you know, two no, the thirds, only thing yes, exactly. is, is somebody sticking their fingers into this dude's squishy ass. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, a jelly ass. Well, like, mm-hmm. what do you in the thing where he stuck his fingers in his face mm-hmm. at that point? It's just yeah. like that. That's what I'll remember. Yeah. Yeah. But is that enough to recommend a movie? I guess we're going to find out. I think so. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what. Uh, let's uh, we'll answer some of your mail, and then we'll find out what we thought of. To- is it a, is it even a, a, a like a surprise at this point? Um, maybe it will be. Sean's a wild card. <laughs> Sean is a wild card. Maybe Holly's true. the wild card. <laughs> <laughs> she better be bringing a palate cleanser next week. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's always just like, you know what? I had a change of heart. <laughs> I love this movie, maybe. and then she shunts all of us. All right. Ew. Well, uh, <laughs> let's summon our mail- mailman, uh, Igor, to bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> I... Y'all think he's been part of a shunt? He looks like he looks like a shunt re- thing. I think he's the result of a shunt. Yeah, yes, like yeah. He's the they, they start out as something else, right? And yeah. It's over multiple shuntings, they become the leftovers oh, like of a, a shunt. That's shape. so gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ooh, the shunt shavings. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god! Shunt yep. shavings. <laughs> Add that to. Whoever was keeping track of the weird phrases you came up with, you have like three of them now. Like add this to the list. I forgot what the other ones were. Uh, uh, flesh something. something to do with oh, flesh, flesh gloves. Flesh gloves. Flesh gloves. Uh, and didn't he say something about Igor like oozing pus or something? Yeah, yeah there, there was, was something pus pussy as well. with. Those are your right. three. We, yeah. we gotta, okay. we gotta yeah. get this. Let's get, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't. We right. guys, we gotta go. Well, we should. Uh, I know we told you up front, but we should remind you again how you can get a hold of us. You can follow along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter, at Sat Freak Show. You can email us, Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, I've watched some weird shit while aboard this freak show train, but this was a new level of insanity. Even the copious amounts of hot 80s hair couldn't keep me invested long enough to see slimy butthole face dude. He Dom says, would like the hair. So his rating. Because Damo, he gives a rating. So he gives this movie negative five young-looking bootleg paranoid John Stamoses out of ten. <laughs> there was a few moments he looked very Stamos. He did. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because of the mullet. Right? Yeah. 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 Just, I wish I thought of that before. It might have made the movie more entertaining. Bootleg Stamos. Bootleg. It's a funny, funny phrase. Yeah. Funny. Thank you, Dom. Uh, Teresa Ann congratulates us that we're finally tackling this beast. Teresa has wanted this for a long time. Yes, she has. Yes. So your wish is granted. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler says, ah, yeah, the classic 80s. What the fuck is that movie? From director Brian Yuzna, who also directed two reanimator sequels, Return of the Living Dead 3, The Dentist 1 and 2, mm. and was producer on the original reanimator along with the guy who helped create the story for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, comes mm-hmm. this classic. I don't even really know what to say, but fuck it. Hope you guys have fun with this classic body horror mind fuck movie. I want to drive in double nope. feature of this and Honey I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. The going. I want to take my kids to both. Yeah, I'm not going to that. <laughs> oh. Again, why aren't you asking us to program? Uh, right, your, yeah. Honey I Shrunk the Kids would be a great palate cleanser. Right, this and movie. then would it not? You do trivia. It's like find the connection between yeah. these two movies. <laughs> Write the Venn diagram of these movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, the not I'm sure, so. I'm sure Auntie got shunted in <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> Auntie's four. The aunt. That happens in four. Ah, How many right. of them are there? Three? Honey, I Shrunk the there's, Baby? There, What's there, right? There's three. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. Honey, I Blew up the Baby. Kid. We Shrunk Ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So and then, I think there's a show. I oh, there was, was like a, a TV show. Store. I think there was a show for there a brief was. period. It was yeah, on yeah. Disney. Yes, there was. Okay. Yeah. Well, the not so real Michael Whitaker says, I've been put in Facebook jail until next week, so I have to comment <laughs> from my Instagram. But Jesus. Wow, breaking out of jail to comment. Wow. Congrats. <laughs> I know, yeah, this is no small feat, but he says, but Jesus, tap dancing Christ, this movie, <laughs> incest, human amoebas, cannibalism, sex parties, and enough about my Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> a very weird movie that somehow Classic. I didn't learn about until two years ago. What is it about this era that a movie like this can disappear into the mix? The uh, 80s were crowded, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true. But yeah, it's crazy that that's how dense the 80s were, that this is like a With just loss to the scenes of time. With just fantasy, yeah. you know, film. Yeah. I wonder Cocaine's what the, a hell of a drug. Yeah. I wonder what the trailer looks like. Because maybe people watch it today and they're like, eh, I don't know. And then this is the movie. Can you imagine in 1989, watching this trailer, thinking it was something else, and then going and seeing that? No. What a, I bet what it's I like can't. in a world where yeah. everything is perfect. And it's it like, like, like it nice, yeah. rich Birds people dancing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. They're like, people I bet this is going to be like Stepford, right? <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Probably. Well, Adam says, I love this movie. The love Adam. it. Screaming Mad George is an insane genius. I've always felt the ending was left open. Bill Whitney escapes from society and leaves Beverly Hills. What happens next? I'm curious how you That's would go a- about a sequel. To this body That's a horror good question. Classic. What happens next? What happens in any of this movie? You can, <laughs> good question. You can't escape society. Yeah. No matter where you go. Because I was going to say, there it is. he like starts off, right? He's got, he's taking therapy for the stuff, you know, that right. didn't actually happen to you, but he can't do that because they did that in this movie and he doesn't trust anybody. 
So All right. a, you've, you've got a narrative problem right you there. You gotta follow that somebody be the, else. You gotta follow Milo or something. That would be the Fright Night 2 thing. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So in the other version, he's like all ramboed up somewhere knowing that society... He's taking on society, right? He's, oh, like or he's, he's waiting decided. for them to come for him. Like, or, or, well, and he has to decide to go get them first. Right. Oh, he so would know... Revenge on society. Mm-hmm. Right. He wouldn't. Yeah. He has to stop them because he's the only one who knows at this right. point. Those three are the only ones that know. Yep. There's your sequel. Yeah. Okay. With an actual narrative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a concept. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, you know what? No, that is more narrative than this. All right. Well, Nelson Nascimento says, I might be in the minority, but I love this movie. I remember reading about how bonkers it was going to be in Fangoria, Screaming Mad George delivers, and then some. Yuzna supposedly had a sequel, has a sequel perfect to comment on today's generation, which may unfortunately never see the light of day. You'll get turkey and stuffing with this one. Let the shunt begin. <laughs> I stuffing. think it's called Society 2 Body Modification. Like I think that's Ooh, uh, from, I don't like, like that. the, from the 90s, probably. That's that was the 90s. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. probably yeah. 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 Uh, Adam Kaler says, uh, I would think one person, at least one person, wouldn't be able to make eye contact with anyone that in the next holiday after the shunt. <laughs> <laughs> You'd oh. think they're far too normal after that. That's true. Yeah. That's again an orgy gone wrong. There you go. Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I love me a bit of slimy body melting fornication. I saw this finally a few months ago after decades of hearing about it, and the final scenes, practical effects were great and very gross, but the movie as a whole was an average affair. That's fair. Average is being that's generous. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> I think people always forget. There is an hour and 20 minutes of other movie before the shunting even happens. Yeah. yeah. That's, it's a revisionist uh, yeah. memory. Although everybody seems to be coming to it like uh, fairly recently, though, within the last right? couple of years. Um, Richard Kratzer says, oh, boy, if y'all have never seen this before, then you're in for a treat, but not a delicious treat like <laughs> Snickers or a Milky Way bar or something fruity like Jolly Ranchers or Starburst. This is treat is more like candy corn dipped in expired mayonnaise than covered in glass shards. Ugh. Having said that, it is indeed a perfect movie for the freak show because that's indeed what it is. That, Enjoy. That is that is descriptive, my yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Good creative writing. Good job. We we posted some... I can taste your words. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, we posted a picture uh, advertising that we were watching this to get your comments. Grant Parrish says, I saw the picture of the butthead, and I was like, I'm watching that movie. Wow. There was a lot of movie to get through to get to that. And then, like, (laughs) why? I got to wait for the episode releases and not be teased and tempted by this freak show's mastery of manipulation (laughs) by social media. Who wrote this? Grant Parrish. Ah, <laughs> oh, <yes>. Grant. <laughs> uh, yes. Sean Rogers says, I know Holly has been looking forward to this one for so <laughs> long. <laughs> the, there was a good couple years that anytime this movie got mentioned, Holly and I would immediately be like, oh, like, yeah. like I had a visceral reaction to yeah. just the mention of this yep. movie. That's how you bring a movie to the Saturday Night mm-hmm. Show. Just, yep. Uh, <laughs> I was dreading this all day at work. I'm just, so sorry. I know. Just I was like, let's rip this, this fucking of band aid off. This yeah. is the freak show. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. It's going to come. <laughs> uh, Mark Harrison says this movie gives new meaning to the phrase eat the rich. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robin Lineman Silver says this one really fucked with my head back in the day. Did, were you? Uh, did you, you, were you, you imagine watching shunting? this as a child? <laughs> Holy shit! If you watch this God. under the age of like twenty, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think I watched it under the age of twenty. Oh, Jesus, Explains but, a lot. Colin, yeah. Yeah. I was like you're different. Yeah, but there yeah. was a <laughs> lot of movies you're like this different. back then. This wasn't even extreme. Okay, and then yeah. uh, right, uh, last... I, w- I had a smile on my face the last twenty <laughs> minutes of this movie, so. Um, last week we watched a movie it was the last week habit. Uh, Pat Hetfield said habit is a movie that definitely deserves more attention. The same goes for all of Larry Fessenden's oeuvre. Uh, also try the last winter and Wendigo. Yeah. I think those will be the next one. I think I've seen enough. Uh, Me too. <laughs> oh, I will go further. Yeah. Go further. Uh, Peter Gatt apparently loved Holly's review of pretentious nonsensical drivel. He says, I only Thank listened you. to that. The start and the wrap up. As I had no interest in this film. That's fair. That's and, fine. And thank you for your kind we, words. We understand. <laughs> the week before that, we watched High Tension and Sea Huds. Chuds. Writes in and says, I was really into High Tension at the time. I enjoyed them as well. Are there other French extremist films you'd recommend that aren't of the martyrs slash irreversible variety? In other words, more extreme than I want to get into. Uh. 
Uh, mm. it, Sh- Shaytan. I would say check out Shaytan. That one's, I mean, it's Vincent Cassell, literally mustache twirling villain. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, inside. Inside. Uh, Is that too extreme? Uh, uh, I would say it's more on the martyr's end than he would probably like. Yeah. Um, but they are French extreme. I yep. mean, I guess there's a yep. certain level of, I would say you know, good, good night, mommy. I know it's like technically a runoff movie, but I would say good night, mommy. And I'd say um, frontiers frontiers. I would say f- 2007 funny games. If you haven't seen that, definitely watch that revenge. The revenge is a newer I, one, but I I'd recommend that. I didn't care for revenge. Oh, did, yeah. No, I didn't care for that. Right, and uh, cache slash hidden. That's more of like a, it's a Hannah K movie too, but it's more, a little bit more on the thriller side, but it's got some real creepy French extremist moments. So right, there you go. You got there a you handful go. of, I was going to uh, say, you got your list. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to tell you Holly. what we thought. Oops, Holly gets to go first. Uh, no, sir. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I don't like it. <laughs> Holly, what did you think of uh, society? Do you want to be a part of it? No. Nope. Okay. No interest. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. I will be poor for the rest of my life. Uh, That's fine. I will take poor. Okay. You you either have to be poor or you have to do this at least once a year. Poor. Oh, shut. <laughs> How rich am I? How rich am I if I do this? And once you live a year? for a long time. How rich am I though? That's why I need to. There's got to be like, a dollar as amount. As, as rich know? as they are. Like yeah. Bezos, rich. Yeah. 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 At least see their houses. I can do. Right, it. I can if shine. I'm that rich, I can do this once a year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. See, yeah. see, everybody's got a price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Because it'd be your only problem, right? <laughs> I mean, like, that's it. I've Colin, it's just like you yeah. guys. I thought I was sick. <laughs> I have up. one bad night a year. Okay, yeah, exactly. I'll take it. Right, right? one bad. That's night better than my life now. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right? I'll take Make it. Make me Jeez. rich. <laughs> wow, we are easy targets, Holly. <laughs> uh, were you done? Um, <laughs> no, I, okay. I will. I will fully admit that the the, the effects in this are impressive. Um, and I won't deny that at all. They're effective disgusting i ugh, i really fucking hate this movie <laughs> it's awful i i don't understand i'm not judging anyone who likes it i get it there are some gruesome things that i i like there's you know i brought dead alive i loved that you know i do like some gross things but this is not one of them this is not for me i feel like if the <laughs> Holly's wearing a very nice sweater right, right now, look, and I, I came, feel like that says no to society. I came straight from work, and I'm wearing a really nice. <laughs> you like, are. Sweater. You should be watching society in that. <laughs> right. I feel dirty right now. <laughs> wearing a nice cardigan. Um, yeah, this is not for me. I like the effects. I appreciate them, but I mean, to be honest, the, the writing, the editing, the fact there's no plot, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just ridiculous nonsense. Um, it doesn't. The, the effects do not make up for it. It's a long movie to get to this payoff, and it's a gross payoff. Not one that I really or anyone needs, actually. <laughs> so, no, it's a it's a giant pass on society. But I made it through. Second time. Of, second time. Comparisons yeah. Okay. I watched the life. first time I watched this. I watched it to see if I wanted to bring it to the same year. Show. That's why I watched it too. Which, yeah. I just want to point that out. So I've suffered through this twice for you and people. Same. Holly and I both watched it independently yeah. and said, nah, don't need to bring that. Yeah. And then Sean still brought it anyway. See? And this is the, so you guys are doing it wrong. You can't watch them This is the second time it's happened because the last time you brought Cemetery Man. Oh, and I did the oh, same thing. Movie. With, I watched yeah, I that, like movie that movie on my own no. to see if it was a freak show movie. And I was like, fuck this movie. Yeah. And then you brought it. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fuck this movie too. Don't watch Society or, you know, do and do your thing, whatever. But no, don't watch Society. It's dumb. <laughs> <Colin>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, uh, it's been one. Of, I've seen it. This is my third time. I haven't liked it any of the any of the previous times that I've seen it. And I didn't like it tonight. I get that you know there's a big cult following for just the effects work mm-hmm. in the end of it. But even watching it this time, I was not very impressed by them. To tell you the truth, they look fake. They look rubbery. I guess maybe they always have. I think maybe if you're you know you actually go with like okay, what are we actually seeing here? This is gross. You know, people melding and stuff. Um, it's, it, it's a show piece, you know I mean? It is like something that you'll remember at, long after you see the this movie. This will get us more work. You know, I'm surprised That's because I like. mean, the idea of it is kind of like there's, there's a titillation. I think that the filmmakers are playing with, like, you're going to see, like, it's kind of like a big flesh orgy, mm. but it's not as sexy or as like, you know, as you would expect. They are trying to like go, no, it's going to be gross. Yeah. You know? It's- um, don't get, don't let the the word orgy excite you about this. No, because yeah. no. some that's how somebody's going to sell it to you. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I know we've said it a lot tonight. Don't let it. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but the problem with it is, is the movie feels completely manipulative from like the frame one, because when you keep having these psych outs, which I get, I get are trying to put you in the perspective of the main character, but all it does is undermine the audience's confidence in your movie. It's like, I can't believe anything that I'm seeing at any given time, mm-hmm. you know? It's like it's there, then it's not there, then it's there, and it's not there. And it's like, okay, I think there's only one scene really where we don't see from Billy's perspective. We go with Milo when Billy's in the hospital, right? I think that's the only time you're actually seeing like what you have to say are objective scenes in the movie. Right. And he doesn't see anything weird, although he says he does, but we don't see him seeing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. From a narrative standpoint, I think I'm going to agree with everything that I heard here tonight. It is a movie that (laughs) establishes early on, like, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be this party later, and something weird's going to happen. It's going to be some crazy orgy thing. We're going to find out. Stay tuned. And then it drags you along for, uh, like, 45 minutes past that point of spinning its wheels. Um, And because of that, I don't care about, you know, like, how well or, you know, that the ending is orchestrated uh i gotta say like you know you don't it it fails as a movie concept is there it isn't like an original thing but i wouldn't recommend society i think you can see other better films it's like like it's like if you want to go to the smoky mountains but you got to drive through illinois first yeah yeah and i think that's the thing about boring but that's the other thing about this era i remember even back then when i saw it there you know there was such a glut of stuff that was more that was better that this became like it was second tier Mm -hmm. at least you know even back then and now because we're sifting uh through time and because we don't make movies like this now could you imagine this coming out now would never so that's why you know there's a like what the the, they used to movies don't have any sex like this yeah so uh michaela what do you think you know Sean, you've well, uh, pass, yeah. oh, oh, oh. you've really It's fun when my name is the first thing out of people's mouths. <laughs> you, know what, Sean? <laughs> you know what, Sean? Looking back on uh we're we're approaching the end of the year and our wrap ups will be soon. Um you have made some choices this year. Yes, you you I would describe them as maliciously chaotic. I think you are like a tornado of like and just spinning around with these chaotic picks and you don't care the damage you inflict. <laughs> and I think that is evident in nothing but trouble in yeah. Howard the Duck. And yeah. now you're going for the hat trick with society. You're yeah. picking all the button pushing movies, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you know what? This I think I think I'm gonna have to get a revenge pick Ooh. on you soon because this is the third time in a less than a calendar year you've pushed those buttons. So <laughs> I think I'm sorry, Holly. You can be the bigger person. I don't think I'm going to anymore. I think That's fine. Yeah. I think I'm willing yeah. to suffer a punishment myself if it means I can be this tornado back at Sean. That's fair. That That's being fair. said, this is my second time watching this movie. Sean picked it not having any idea what he was picking. No, when, when which Colin is true chaos. The butthead, uh, pick, I was like, oh. I didn't know I was in the what he said, <laughs> true chaos. I was very upset by that. She's like, are you serious? Yes, because I feel like the only thing people know about the movie is the shunting. So the fact that you knew about this movie but didn't know about the shunting, that's like an, an impossible, impossible odds that you knew about this movie but didn't know about the shunting. Like, okay. That's the only thing people know about this you movie. You are literally defying odds. Yeah. <laughs> um, that being said, this movie is narratively weak, um, <laughs> but I respect it for a lot of the choices it makes. It It is a movie for adults it has great effects it takes chances it's willing to push you to an uncomfortable place and i cannot say that for very many movies i've seen in the past five to ten years i think i'm gonna have to recommend it because i think you have to check some boxes in life as a horror fan and i think this is a rite of passage and something you gotta check who saw that coming why wild card wild card bitches (laughs) i didn't say it was good or that i liked it i said i think it's something you gotta do you know i think it's just (laughs) You got to cross off your list so that you can say, well, I saw it, you know? I think. Uh, so I'm going to recommend it. Michaela's turning into me? Sean, what did you think? Oh, no. Society. Oh, no. I think Michaela has become untethered. <laughs> because you, like I said, the malicious, <laughs> the malicious <laughs> chaos picks. Yeah. Her rage knows no yes. bounds. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wait till my next pick, Sean. I'm going to come right back at you with it. So. Um, um, I, I. I did not realize the damage I've done. You have over yeah. the years. Um, I make no apologies. My review for society. Um, uh, like everybody said here, um, I was thinking about what you were saying when you were talking about the effects and how watching it this time you're like, ah, eh, they're not so great. I think it's uh, all a matter of worth. What 
what you had to go through to get up to that point, you look at the effects more because you're just like, all right, it took so long to get to this point. Now I'm going to like look at every inch of this when it comes up. And I think once you have to go through an hour and 20 minutes of the movie we have to go through, uh, yeah, they, I don't think they hold up as well. I, they're not as impressive as I thought they were going to be. Like it is, um, I love the craftsmanship of, craftsmanship of it. Uh, I appreciate the work goes into it. Obviously, I love practical effects, but... Mm, the creativity of it. The creativity, like, yes. Okay, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that, um, but... You, oh man, you really had to put us through a lot to get there. Um, I've seen, I've seen better. I've seen more disgusting, personally. Um, there's a lot of movie in this movie, and like, like Colin said, they're just um, when you can't trust what the characters are doing. Why do I care what the characters are doing? A lot of problems with this movie. Um, there is from oh, you got me with uh, you got to check off some boxes in life. I don't think you got to check this box. You can get all of this somewhere else uh you can get yeah uh this one box i i don't think you should check um that this, it's not worth it to get there we got to the end and it wasn't worth it like i was it was boring up until that point like ah eh. no don't watch society mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry Michaela. you guys you, know, you, you guys all catch it in the mailbag next week so you know <laughs> Yeah, probably. I'll be I mean, safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's have fun true. with that. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. okay. Michaela's walking tall out of here. Oh. Okay. Right. No, I, yeah, you can't. One, four, three against society. Oof. So society. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess uh, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. What are we going to watch next week? Uh, we're going to watch a New Year's movie. Ooh. It's got that uh, '70s must to it. Ooh, a must. That's a new Colin, '70s. '70s must. Colin, do you know what we're going to watch? No. We're going to watch Terror Train. Oh, yep. Ooh. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen this. Isn't it 1980? Yeah. It is, but it okay. feels 70s. Yeah, it feels 70s. <laughs> it's, God, it's that cultural seepage yeah. we've yeah. talked yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seepage. Yeah. Oh, well, so that might be our New Year's movie, unless we see what, uh, what Michaela's it's pulling close, out of yeah. that. It's yeah. close. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. Okay. Because be, yeah, yeah. we always do Christmas movies. Let's right, do yeah. New Year's. Yeah, Terror like Train. Terror Train. All right. I haven't seen this one. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's no shunting in it. Hopefully it's a palate cleanser. <laughs> and we do want to remind you go over to our facebook's twitter's uh instagrams and uh and send some send in some recommendations for listener choice month all right happy shunting everybody happy shunting all right well until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark